our hopes for joy are pretty fragile. And if we put our fragile hopes for joy in things and people and places that are even more fragile, we're just setting ourselves up for disappointment. My name is Jenny, and I'm a wife and mom raising two kids. But I used to live a more glamorous life as a TV reporter. I was on the nightly news interviewing pop stars and politicians. So when I said goodbye to TV and hello to motherhood, I suddenly discovered what we moms are up against. We live in a world that tells us to be rich and famous, thin and successful. You know, almost nobody says, oh, hey, you're a mom? That is fabulous. But you are fabulous. And I'm here to tell you why. It's the Channel Mom Show with Jenny Dean Schmidt. We're here for you. Brought to you by the Healthy Marriage Project. Just click on one of their ads to find out about a healthy relationship workshop near you. If life is feeling difficult for you or you'd just like to cheer up, there are some real solutions to help you get beyond the darkness, the woes, the sorrows of life, and it's just a choice away. Because this is the Channel Mom Show, we're going to start with the fact that our next guest is a mother of three and a grandmother of five. The most important thing about her. (laughs) She's also the co-founder of Saddleback Church in California with her husband, Rick, who's an international speaker. You've probably heard of him because he's the best-selling author of The Purpose Driven Life, which was a huge craze not too long ago. Kay, though, is actually best known for her 10 years as a tireless advocate for those living with HIV and AIDS. I've got something to tell her about that. And the orphaned and vulnerable children that are left behind by that disease. Kay is the author of several books, including her newest, Choose Joy, because happiness isn't enough. And I love that title because it's true. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome, Kay Warren, to the Channel Mom Show. Thank you. It's good to talk to you this morning. It's good to talk to you, too. And I so appreciate you getting up California time to talk to us. <laughs> yeah. In fact, when you said just a minute ago that, you know, you, you, that, um, you have the video of your show, yeah. you'll see me next week. I'm going, I had this momentary uh, wait, am I on camera? Because, like, I didn't comb my hair. I just got out of bed. Oh, gosh. And then I thought, oh, there's no camera. It's okay. Calm That's down. Right, right. Calm down. We're not Skyping you. <laughs> this momentary lapse of, you know, it's too early in the morning and I can't think. No, we're just going to use that lovely photo of you. So you'll look fabulous every time you oh, talk. We'll put that photo good. up. All yeah. right. Then I can relax. Okay. I'm fine. First of all, I want to thank you. You're delightful, by the way. Just love. Oh. I, I feel like I've gotten to know you by reading your book. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank I mean you. it. Um, I, I, and I want to thank you for the honesty of your book. You, you tell some embarrassing stories about yourself and also lucky for Rick, you tell embarrassing stories about him too. <laughs> you share some gut-wrenching stories about how you nearly lost a grandchild and then a daughter-in-law. You express some not-so-pious reactions. So I was just really impressed with your realness. And I want to tell people at the very beginning of your book, you talk about the fact that you grew up in a pastor's home, you went to a Christian college, you married a pastor, you were a Bible teacher. And so people might have expected you to be this holy, wonderful, completely spiritually mature woman. But you admit that you're kind of a glass half empty person and that joy for you can be a struggle. And, and I'm assuming that's why you wrote the book, correct? It is. I just got tired of this gap. I would read the Bible and... Um, Paul, you know, the Apostle Paul would say things like rejoice. Um, always, Jesus said, my joy is going to be in you and it's going to be full. And I saw these um, example after example in the Bible of people who lived with joy. And I looked at my life and it just wasn't there. And I just, that gap grew. And uh, I kept deciding something had to be wrong because it was either just for the people in the Bible and had nothing to do with me. Yeah. Um, or I was missing out somehow. And I knew, I just knew it didn't have to do with just let's leave it inside the leather book, close it up, that it had to somehow ha- imply, um, be part of my life. And so I needed to figure it out. Yeah. And by the way, I'm right there with you. I'm somebody who looks at myself and says, why, if I really say that I believe in a good God, do I not live joyfully? Like there really is a good God. And, and, and here's another thing that I loved about you. You, you, I think everybody, Christian, non-Christian, people who don't get God, people who love God will get where you're coming from. <laughs> you quote James 1, 2, you say, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. And you write, are you kidding? Because, <laughs> because that's where you come from. Like, really? I, I mean, I'm, I'm bogged down today. And I think a lot of moms, that's one reason this book resonated with me and with my audience, I believe it will resonate with them is because moms are exhausted. Moms go through the pain of their children and their own lives. They go through painful marriages. They go through painful divorces. And, and to, to walk around and say, just consider this an opportunity for joy, this trial you're going through, is tough. You want to slap somebody, don't you? Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, if they say something to you, you just want to go wake up and smell the coffee. Yeah. That's not the way it works. Right. That's right. That's right. You know, we, we have an audience that's probably about 50-50. It's secular and, and then also people who follow Christianity and then and, and uh, believe in Jesus. Um, so I want to kind of try to consider everybody when you're talking about this. What, what do you think goes on in our modern society? Shelly and I were talking about this in the first segment. Uh, are more prosperous societies, more indulged societies, uh, societies that look more to material things and events to make them happy um, and, and status and, and the right kind of house and the right kind of car? Are, do you think those, those societies struggle more with, with not being able to find joy? I do. I, I mean, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. It's when, when there's so much externally to rely on, um, we think is going to be a reliable source of joy, it's, it's really easy to take our eyes off of the things that matter because joy has nothing to do with what happens on the outside, it has nothing to do with what you have or don't have or who you love or don't love or what you've got or don't have or what job. I mean, it has nothing to do with that. And because we think it does, there's a million reasons for us to be victims and say, well, I, of, of course, if I had her advantages, I could be joyful. Well, of course, if I had the relationship she had. And we, um, we, just, we compare and say, well, if I was like her or if I was like what she had, then I could be happy. All about things that are on the, out, on the outside. And yet when I've traveled the world and been with some of the poorest people, I don't want to romanticize poverty because there's nothing romantic about poverty. It just, all I'm saying is that when so much else is stripped away, it comes down to those basics and you start realizing that the externals can come and go. Yeah. They're, they're not reliable. They're not, they're not steady. And if we put our hopes for joy are pretty fragile. And if we put our fragile hopes for joy in things and people and places that are even more fragile, we're just setting ourselves up for disappointment. That's right. So, so well said. Here, here's where I'm aching. You write on page 30 of your book, what you think a lot of people are saying to their the, to themselves. Would you mind if I just read that quickly? Mm, go ahead. One of these days I'll go after joy, but not today. I mean, if it falls into my lap, that's great. But I'd be happy just to get through today. Really, I'd be thrilled just to get a good night's sleep. Joy is too big a stretch for me right now. And I think so many moms are in that place. I can't tell you how many exhausted, overwhelmed... <sighs> I don't know, a discouraged moms that I meet who, who know they should be happy because they have two precious children or five precious children and, uh, or some of them have grandbabies like you do uh, or they've got a, a, you know, a nice house or some nice cars or they have a good job, whatever it is. And they think I should just be happy. But your point is it, it, it's because you can't find your happiness just in those things. You talk about two parallel tracks. And I want you to talk about that, that, that we have one track that we might rely on, where the, but, that, but it comes with sorrow. And then, then there's the other track of joy. You were somebody who thought that life was waves and you just kept waiting for the next good wave. Yeah, you, you said it. I, I used to think that life, you know, came in these waves. You know, you've got a wave of good things, a good of bad things, highs, lows. And, um, and I finally come to believe that life is more like a set of parallel train tracks, that joy and sorrow run right next to each other every day of our lives. And they're, they will, they'll never be separated because even in the most joyful of our moments, there is just this little tinge of recognition that, that life isn't perfect, that this situation isn't perfect. Even the thing in this moment is making me just, my soul be flooded with joy, makes me, I'm still aware that things aren't perfect. But also in the most sorrowful, the most, the darkest moments, there, if we're honest, we can still, I mean, the sun, the sun is still shining. I'm still breathing. There's breath in my lungs. The, the trees are still green. I still have this. I still have, there's just that awareness that even in the darkest moments, there's still things that we can be grateful for and appreciative of. And so to me, when I realize that everything in my life is both tinged with joy and sorrow, yeah. um, it gives me a perspective that I, I can keep going. I, I'm not expecting all joy and I'm not expecting all sorrow. I know they're both coming. Yeah. I, I want to confess something to you. As I was reading your book y yesterday, um, I, I was having a really bad day and a lot of things were getting me down and I was feeling depressed. I, I can feel depressed uh, sometimes and mm -hmm. uh, get discouraged. I work alone uh, to, to produce mm -hmm. the show out of my house. And so I, I, I'm alone with my own head, which isn't always good. And I was really, <laughs> I was feeling sorry for myself. A lot of things were going wrong. I was discouraged about a number of things and I, just kind of weepy, honestly. And I, I picked up your book. What a great time to pick up your book. And I thought, you, you have a four-word sentence in there, and you say it's the crux of your book. Would you like to say the sentence? Hmm. Joy. Um, joy is a choice. Yeah. 
Joy is a choice. And so I looked up, Kay, I want you to know, you were a blessing to me yesterday. I was, I was sitting at a window. So the sun was shining on me. I was feeling sorry for myself. I read those words and I read a number of the other words in your book. And I thought, look up, look up. There's light pouring through your window. It's sunshine. It's beautiful. There's a green plant right in front of you that's gorgeous and thriving. Your kids are, are, are beautiful and wonderful. Your husband loves you. Now, again, you can't count on those things, but I could see the good. And, and, I, could, and I, could, I literally was able to say, God is good and, and it's okay. And you can well, choose that. You can. And, and I, I really want to make it clear to your audience that this is not this um, feeling that, that we work up, that, that joy, when I say it's not the externals and then I say it's internal, well, I'm not saying, okay, so if you just work really hard and you summon up all your energy and all your good feelings yeah. that you're going to end up feeling good. And that, that is not at all what I'm talking about. That is happiness. That's happiness, and it's fleeting, and it's there for a moment, and it has so much to do with, when I say being grateful, um, I, I do mean being grateful. I think that's one of the ways it reawakens this sense of joy within us. I'm talking about a sense of well-being that comes from knowing, I believe, that, that the only place that joy is really found, because the only thing at the end of the day that can't be taken away from us is our relationship with God. That's it right. can't be taken away. That's right. He's, he's the only thing, the only one who's never going to leave us or abandon us. And so my joy has got to be in the eternal. It's yeah. not even on what's happening on the inside yeah. of me. It's, it's, not, it's not the exterior, the externals. It's not what's going on inside of me, because frankly, what's going on inside of me sometimes is a pretty scary mess, but it's got to be connected with the eternal, which cannot change. And so my joy, this sense of well-being that I have begun to understand and experience has nothing to do with what happens outside of me, has nothing to do with what I'm thinking or feeling on the inside, has everything to do with being connected to the eternal who will never leave me or abandon me or change. Yeah. I agree. Uh, it, she's got so much to tell you. She has some two stories that I want her to go into in the next segment about her own personal tragedy and how she had to even find, well, no, she's right. You don't force yourself. You have to fall back on something that, that is greater than all the stuff that's unfolding around you. And she's going to talk about that coming up. And Shelly's even going to get a word in edgewise. Also, we're giving away a copy of her book on the show today. Call 303-297-1510. 303-297-1510 for a free copy of Kay Warren's book, Choose Joy, Because Happiness Isn't Enough. Uh, we're so blessed to have her. We're looking forward to some more stories coming up and some techniques for how you can just tap into the eternal joy she's talking about.